Hi, welcome back to my studio. My name is Christine, and I just want to say happy St. Patrick's Day today. Uh, I am going to today show you how to just draw a Celtic border pattern. I made a video of this before, and it's like, you know, I took the scenic route. <laughs> I told you all kind of extra stuff, uh, what you can do with this idea, and all, all kind of extra information. Um, and my granddaughter told me the video was too long and it was boring. <laughs> So right now today, I'm going to just show you the pattern. So if that's all you want to know, that's what we got. We're going to get started drawing. And uh, let me switch us to the right screen here so you can see my desktop. Okay, so I'm also going to show you how to do this using uh, graph paper because that will help you get an understanding of it. And I do recommend you practice this uh, a few times before you try to do it on your real paper that you want to uh, work with. Uh, to decorate so uh, here's what we're doing we're going to draw something like this pattern and uh, we're going to uh, start with drawing a box well we're going to draw lines of dots and that's what we let me zoom in so you can see that better we're going to make uh, a bunch of lines of dots and instead of doing it on plain paper we're doing it on this graph paper and then I'm going to show you how uh, to use those dots as a base and we'll be drawing and uh, let's see, maybe you can see this one better. Yeah. Hmm. Are we zoomed the whole way in? Nope. Well, there we go. That that works. Um, I want you to notice we're going to draw this line of dots, but then we're going to be drawing our lines above the line of dots and below the line. So you want to put your dots not right up close to the edge so that you'll have room to draw and your pattern can look pretty all the way around. And here is uh, another version of it. I, I did this. This was one of my practices. And I want you to see, I guess I'll have to zoom back out so it'll all fit in the frame here. Uh, I want you to see what happens when, like I was doing this one and I practiced and I just started right here and I kind of eyeballed. I put my first dot here and it's like, okay, I've got um, this. Let me see how I can show you this more. Oh, this is this makes it really obvious right here. I've got a line of dots here and a line of dots here. And there's way more space on this side than there is on this side. I was eyeballing it right here and figuring, okay, I got about that much space there and I got about that much here and I'm going to just put my dots out and let's see if it happens right and it worked out good this way, but then this way, not so good. There's a lot more space on this side than this side and I didn't even have enough space and you can see how my pattern is like rammed right up against the edge there and it's kind of flattened. So um, that's one reason we practice so you can work out the, <clears throat> the size and the location of how close to the edge Put your dots but i'm going to go ahead and just start right there i think i've got this one figured out good and let's zoom back in i think i've got this one figured out in, in the right space and um i'm going to use every uh second i'm going to use two squares there for for one unit of measure between my dots and you want to keep also uh your dots have to be evenly spaced so if you're not using graph paper you just use a ruler and you measure like every quarter inch or every half inch or whatever measurement you make. Oh, you can't even see that ruler, can you? Whatever measurement you make, you have to use the same measurement all the way around, all four sides of this box of dots. Because remember, we're making a border that goes all the way around. So we're going to put dots on that side, dots on this side, dots here, and dots here. And we use those dots to help us um, measure where to, to draw, you know, we, we go forward the right number of dots and that's how we draw the pattern. Okay, so um, the next thing is, I'm gonna just put these dots across here and then I wanna talk to you about how to know how many dots. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and now we can stop there because we've got about an even amount of space on this side and this side, and that's as close as we're gonna to get to, to uh, the right amount of space to having the same amount of, on all four sides. I've already worked that out, so you just have to take my word for it on that. And that's because I did this a bunch of times in practice. Now, I've made 22 dots here. Um, right here on this little card, I wrote in the center, you need multiples of five plus two. The two will be a corner dot and a spacer dot on every side. We've got a multiple of five here, five, 10, 15, 20, plus two more dots, one, two. So that's 22 dots. This could be, if my paper was really big, this could be um, 115 dots plus two and be 117. Uh, if I was coloring on a, or, or making a banner or a poster board or something like that, um, I would have a lot more dots, but also making a, 
making something large like that, you're going to want your dots spaced farther apart, like maybe an inch apart. Uh, and if you're doing a, uh, like on a piece of paper like this, a quarter inch, I, uh, I think a quarter inch apart is probably the smallest you would want to go on a piece of paper this size. But on something small like this, this is, um, this is just a card that's like four by six. So on this four by six card, I could put my dots closer together and make a smaller pattern all the way around. Go like an eighth of an inch or maybe even smaller. So you can adjust the distance between your dots according to the size of piece of paper you're working on. My graph paper today is like eight and a half by 11, just like a piece of typing paper. In fact, I have a piece of typing paper underneath of it because when I start drawing with the marker, the marker goes through and I don't want that on my tabletop. It's so nice. <laughs> but anyway, um, so 22 dots. It's a multiple of 5 and plus 2, and it fits evenly spaced on here. Now I'm going to turn the paper and uh, do the other side here, and let's see what we have and what we come up with. And we always start counting that one. It's going to be in a line right here, so it's a nice even line of dots all the way around like that, making a box. What's weird here is I numbered them because somebody I was talking to said they needed the dots numbered, but I find that that's a distraction. So uh, anyway, start right here. That's dot number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And I'm stopping there because I've got it pretty close to the same amount of space here. And that is 17 dots. So that's a multiple of 5, 5, 10, 15, plus 2, 16, 17. A multiple of 5, plus 2. Now I'm going to make this same line of dots here. It's going to match this exactly. And over here, the same thing, too. And uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and make those dots. Fifteen, sixteen, and 17. Worked out perfectly. So now I have my dots, uh, my box of dots all the way around. I've got a pretty even amount of space all the way around. All of my dots are exactly spaced uh, evenly. That's what's going to make our pattern look um, uniform and, and neatly spaced all the way around. Just keeping that, keeping these dots exactly the same distance apart. Now I'm going to switch to this pen so that you can see uh, better. But I recommend you draw with your pencil because then if you make a mistake, you can always correct it. Okay, now to start off, we're going to count these dots a little bit differently than uh, at any other time in the drawing. So I want you to count one, two, three, four, five. That dot right there is going to be the center dot in, um, in the pattern of the first repeat of the this is a pattern, and it's one repeat. This is a second repeat and a third repeat. So that dot right there, number five, is the center. And then six, seven, that's where we're going to draw to on our first piece here. But the way we counted this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots, that's the one and only time we're going to count that. Every time from now on, when I say go forward seven steps, I mean like you'll be right here, and you'll go forward seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You won't count the dot you're sitting on. You go forward seven steps. So keep that in mind. We start out right here from the corner, count up, and end right there on seven. And now that's our starting point to get started drawing the first uh, bit of, the, of our pattern here. And we're going to go uh, draw up and make a little point, and then come back. And we're going to go to the third dot back one, two, three, or the third step back, one, two, three, and that's one on the other side of the center. And we're going to just bring this line right back there to that dot, and then we'll come down through that dot, but only a little bit because we're making the inside part of our pattern first. We're making these, let's see, yeah, we're making these uh, small, I call them leaf shapes. We just made that one right there, and now we're back over to here, and we're going to make these little leaf shapes. To me, this looks like a small leaf inside of a slightly larger leaf. So anyway, down here, and then we're going to make a little point there and come right back up, make a nice little leaf shape, and go right through that center dot and make another little leaf shape up above the line. And now we come down to this, and we're going to go make another leaf shape below the line of dots again. And we're going to come right over to here, right in the vicinity of below that dot and kind of in a line with that point. 
and then bring that right up to there. Now uh, we're going to, to go forward. We, we need to make an over curve. We need to curve over the top of the line. We're going to curve under the line sometimes and over the line sometimes too. And when we curve over, we enclose uh, or kind of, you know, put an arch over the top of this pattern here. But we got to go forward seven steps. Now go forward seven. Don't count this one as one, but count this one as one because it takes seven steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you'll notice there it's the third dot in front of that. It's always going to be that. But I like to count anyway just to make sure I haven't got any mistakes because this will um, turn up a mistake really quickly if, you, if you're counting. You'll notice it faster than if you're just assuming you're in the right spot because you're three in front of there. Uh, and that comes in handy if you've drawn a whole lot, even if you're working with pencil, you draw drawn a whole lot and then you come to the end and you realize you've got a mistake and you go back and you find it's way over here and you have to erase all of that that you did. I hate when that happens. So I like to um, gauge that, okay, it's the third dot in front, but also it's seven steps forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now I'm going to make a curve. And this is going to go up here and around. And, and so this line that I'm drawing, just continuing my line here, I want to make it go up and over and come right back around and go right into that dot there. Then the next thing is we go forward seven steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's that dot right there. And we're going to curve under the line. And we want it to be just like that as far as how far down. And that, you can see it comes outside of that point. We're going to want to come down far enough that we would um, be able to encompass a point that sticks down that far. So we know we need to come further than that. We're going to need to come down to about right here. And that would allow us to be drawing because we're going to have a pattern drawn in there and we want to leave plenty of room for it. So I'm going to bring this line right down and start curving it around and bring it right up right there. Now that puts us at the same point we were at right here. So we repeat the pattern again. We come up and make a point and then we want to go back to that third dot there. One, two, three. Three steps backwards with the third dot and then go down under the line, make a little small point up through that center dot, make a point up above the line, bring it back down below the line again, curve around and make a point kind of underneath that dot and up to there. Now we're going to go forward seven steps forward again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Puts us right there. It's the third dot in front of that last pattern we just did. And we make a nice curved line, curving right up and around and right down on that dot right there. So far, so good. But now we don't have seven dots straight out there again. So what do we do? We're going to make this, this curve under here, and we have to turn a corner. So what I'm going to show you how to do here is count the dots. And this is where um, you need to, I need to have told you, dot number two on every side. So like this is a line of dots, and there's a dot one, two, three, four, dot, 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 dot. Lot, dot number two on every every single side is always going to be the spacer dot. And so the corner dot's always the corner and the spacer dot is always the spacer dot. Uh, dot number two on every side. So what I mean by that is we're going to count seven steps forward but we're not going to count the spacer dot. So one, two, skip the spacer dot, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the dot we're going to come to. Now I'm just going to circle this dot right here because I want you to notice that is the spacer dot. Every single side is going to be a spacer dot. Even the first side we started on, just not when we start. When we initially get started, you know, our first mark that we're going to make on here, we don't count that the same way as we count on uh, everything else from that point forward. So the way I showed you to start this, count the dots, one, two, three, four, five, that's the center, six, seven, that's the starting point. That's only time you count like that is when you're first getting started and getting going. From that point forward, uh, you count steps forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or whatever it is. Um, from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Always like that. And always when you are come to a corner, one, two, skip the spacer, three, four, five, six, seven. Every time at the corner. Okay, so now we need to make an under curve 
and it's going to need to be, we need to know how far down to make it. So if you look on here and count your squares on your graph paper, you can see that that's two, four, five, about five uh, squares down. And how about going up? Two, four, five, about five squares going up. And that's about how much space we need. So below here, back over here and toward, toward the middle, two, four, five, somewhere in here is where we want to have this curve down to. Around in here somewhere. So now we just need to make a, make this a graceful curve that goes kind of uh, over to join with that line right there, and that's our under curve on the corner. When you're doing this with your pencil, once it's done and you've got everything drawn in, you can uh, go back and, and adjust your curves. And the more you practice, the, the prettier that curve will, will get and easy for you to do it on the first time. Uh, but now we're right here, and we're right here again. So now we go up and make a point and go back to that third dot, make a smaller, shorter point, up through the middle there, back down, over to here and up, and we're ready to make the curve over, and it's for it's seven steps forward. So one, that's where we are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it comes out right at the third dot in front of that. So you just keep going like that all the way around. And there is one, uh, there's a different way that you can hit the corner. Just get this drawn on here. Okay. Uh, we hit the corner on, from an over curve. Sometimes you hit it from an under curve. That's probably going to happen over here. Watch what I mean. From here, we want to go seven steps forward. Oh, and always notice the over curve is followed immediately by an under curve, and the under curve is followed immediately by drawing the pattern. So we curved over, now we need an under curve, and we're right here and we want to step forward seven steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it puts us right at that corner. So we want to come about down this far. So let me just draw this curve right here. And that puts me coming up, and I've hit the corner on this uh, under curve. And we, first of all, repeat the pattern. Now we need to make the over curve, and we got to go forward seven steps. But the first thing to do is to put the corner on. Now I like my corners to come to a point like that. You can round that right off and have a rounded corner if you want to. And, and you do that the same exact way uh, as far as counting steps forward. You just, instead of bringing this up here and making a point, instead of making a point, you just bring it round right around there. Now we just left from right here, so this is our starting point. Now step forward seven steps. One, two, three, four. Skip the spacer dot. Five, six, seven. We want to come to right here on the downward curve. And we want to um, allow this, I said it was about five, so that's two, four, five. We're going to have to go right out to the edge of the paper there to get this right. And that means this is going to come up from here. So that's my my uh, goal where I'm headed to. I'm going to bring that right down around there, like that. And that gives me enough space that I'll fit my pattern in there nicely. Okay, now we've done the over curve. Now we want to do an under the line curve again. Step forward seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Comes to right there. And we want to come down about five. Two, four, five. So that means we're going to come down right in that vicinity somewhere. This graph paper really makes it easier to get your pattern right. And once you've drawn on your graph paper several times, you've got the hang of it really good, and you can draw on any kind of paper you want to do. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and repeat this pattern, because by now, I think you're probably getting that. Um, anyway, once you've practiced on graph paper, then you can draw this on whatever kind of paper you want to that does not necessarily have all of these uh, lines and grids on here making it easy and obvious for you. You'll just have the 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 pattern in your head and you'll know about how it's supposed to come out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you'll just have an easier time of getting this on there like it goes. Because, because you will have practiced with gridded paper or graph paper. 
I got a little more pointy than I wanted. And see, if I was drawing with a pencil, I could erase that and kind of smooth that out. What I would do, though, if I'm, uh, I usually draw with the pencil, and then I take my pen and go back over it and ink the lines, ink over those lines, um, and that's when I make my corrections later. And uh, let's see here. Let me finish this corner here. Okay, one, two, three, four, skip the spacer, five, six, seven. And it's still, you'll notice, not counting the spacer dot, it's still three forward, three dots in front of that where I left off there. Uh, let's see here, two, four, five, I've got to come, I've got to get up there pretty high. All right, and I find it just easier to draw backwards from that makes it easier for me to make a nice line going around although eh, I got that one pretty yucky the, if if I was using the pencil I would definitely correct that line and make that something of a smoother curve like that not that part um, okay seven steps forward because that was an over curve now we need to do the under curve one two three four five six seven comes out right there let me count again one two three four five six seven yep and two, four, down around in here. Make a nice, graceful, curved line. And because it's the up, repeat that pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Puts it right there. Now, we're at the connecting part here. We need to go forward seven steps. One, two, skip the spacer, three, four, five, six, seven. Works out perfectly to connect that line with this one. And we just, we want to come down in here somewhere. So I'm going to bring this right down here and make a nice curve to flow right into that line. Now we've made it one time around. So let's zoom out a little bit there. I've gone exactly one time around. Now we have to go the second time around to fill in the rest of the pattern. And you do that um, the same way you did the other one. And we're, we can pick any point here that has a center. You can start anywhere you want to, but I'm going to start right here and figure that this is where the line comes down. Uh, that, that's the center over there, and so we're going to make this be a center right here, and we're going to do this under curve starting right here and moving forward seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to come right to that dot there, starting at this center, and we're going to come down, you know, round in here somewhere. So start at the center, make the under curve. I forgot to make a line there. Okay, make this curve down and go back up to there. Now we've got this under curve, so we're going to repeat the pattern. And now we make an over curve, and it's going to be seven steps forward, and it's always going to end up in that center of that next uh, part of the pattern there. Let me zoom back in so you can follow along what I'm doing. Okay, so bring this curve up and around and over, and that's where we're going. That, uh, that's where we left from, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right there to the center of that one, that next uh, repeat. And then we just continue on around the same way we did the first one. And that is all there is to it. There you have the pattern drawn all the way around. And then uh, you would ink your pencil lines. And then once your ink is dry, you go back in and you erase the extra uh, dots and the things that show that you didn't want uh, remaining there in your picture. And you can end up with something very beautiful once you've uh, practiced and practiced that, then you can just put it on whatever kind of paper 
you have and you can use colored paper you can you can ink it with uh, colored uh, markers or gel pens or something this would look really pretty on dark paper with a white gel pen or a bright colored gel pen uh, on the dark paper uh, so I hope you have fun with that um, thanks for drawing with me again happy st. Patrick's Day if it happens to be that day when you're watching my video and I hope you'll uh, join me again oh and don't forget if you click uh, subscribe then you can get a notification when I put any more new videos out and uh, click the button uh, well I guess you click subscribe and hit the button then you get notifications but anyway if you click subscribe it should be that much easier to find my channel again next time you want to draw with me or paint so uh, see you next time